Next talk uh, is going to be given by uh, Bikalpa uh, Bomian Gurung uh, from uh, the Indian Institute of Technology at Haranpur, if, uh, and also from Rolls Royce India. At least Rolls Royce I know uh, to pronounce properly. I'm not certain about yeah. the other names. I apologize, and please, the floor is yours, and I'm sorry for the delay. Yes, uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Pikal Bagru, and I'm a master's graduate from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. And the topic of my presentation is aerodynamic shape optimization of delta wing micro air vehicles. And my research is more based upon the application of the tools that is already available rather than any modification to the tool. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. So this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, sorry. This is the outline of my presentation. I'll briefly talk about what motivates us to use the aerodynamic shape optimization tool and the uh, methodology that was used for the optimization. And I'll talk about the results that were obtained from this optimization. And based on the based upon the optimized result, we'd like to compare the uh, results with the comparable uh, simple uh, slightly simpler geometry and then i'll just uh, conclude my presentation so uh, what uh, what are micro air vehicles they are small uh, unmanned air vehicles which have a design restriction of 15 centimeter or smaller dimensions and they have uh, wide applications in military as well as civil applications uh, such as uh, reconnaissance surveillance and search and rescue operations and uh, because of the small because of the small size they operate at very uh, and also their operating speed which is usually around 10 to 15 meter per second they operate at very low Reynolds number and which means they have very high viscous track and also because of the size limitations they have a very low aspect ratio meaning they have a low aerodynamic efficiency which typically ranges from six to seven and also uh, mab typically uh, flies uh, very close to the ground uh, because of that they are very prone to the atmospheric turbulence and hence they are very highly unstable during their operation so one of the design uh, design approach to tackle this uh, instability instability during flight is to have a delta wing platform for the micro air vehicles because of its uh, better stability and cost resistance characteristics however uh, we know that uh, delta wing usually suffers from uh, low aerodynamic efficiency so the objective of our uh, uh, research is to improve the aerodynamic efficiency of the delta wing uh, applicable for micro air vehicles uh, Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, whenever we talk about the delta wing, uh, we see the flow of flow over the delta wing is usually uh, dominated by the two leading edge vortices that is formed on the upper surface of the delta wing. So basically, uh, improving the performance of the delta wing revolves around controlling these uh, leading edge vortices. And there are uh, two ways to change uh, to control these vortices, uh, either by control methods such as leading edge vortex flaps, apex, uh, suction, and blowing systems. But we don't want to add uh, complex uh, uh, control systems to the very limited uh, uh, weight-restricted MEV. So a better approach would be to change the design variables such as leading edge. Uh, leading a shape, camber, thickness, and cord ratio, and also because the leading is uh, leading is vortices is highly dependent on these design variables, and the combined effect, uh, and because of the combined effect, uh, coming up with the optimal design, which has a very uh, 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 which has a very uh, good performance, is uh, difficult. So uh, we see this as a very good opportunity to use aerodynamic shape optimization tool as a design optimization because with that we can take into consideration all the factors such as leading as uh, what uh, leading as shape camber thickness to ratio and everything else in a combined fashion uh, next slide please Okay, uh, this is the free stream condition and methodology that was used and uh, the baseline geometry was extracted from uh, Mukherjee et al and the dimensions are such uh, it is a it is a non standard delta wing with a, a root cord of 10 centimeter and a wing span of 15 15 millimeter 
and for the geometry parameterization freeform deformation was used and uh, on my right uh, on the on my right there is a freeform deformation after the uh, freeform deformation box after the uh, final deformation and also the corresponding uh, deformed optimizer and these are the numerical methods that were used uh, for the flow server su2 was used and governing equation was incompressible rands and convective flux with, uh, or second order open scheme and so on and uh, uh, for the optimization, gradient based optimization was used and uh, discrete, uh, discrete agent based uh, method was used for sensitivity calculation. For the mesh convergence study, three, uh, three meshes were used uh, M1, M2, and M3. And for the um, looking at the accuracy, uh, we used M2 mesh for all the aerodynamic characterization. Whereas M3 mesh, which is a very, uh, which is a slightly coarser mesh, was used for the optimization, uh, considering the uh, amount of time it was taking uh, to compute one uh, simulations. And all the simulations were done uh, using single node and 40 processor on the supercomputing facility Param Sakti at IIT Kharagpur. Okay, here's a validation. Here's a comparison of uh, the results that were obtained with SU2 with the reference paper. We see a very close uh, resemblance of the CL and CD curve uh, with the reference paper. And this is my optimization problem. I want to maximize CL by CD ratio while keeping the uh, base, uh, while keeping the lift coefficient at least uh, higher or equals to the that of the baseline. And all the free, uh, all the control points on the freeform deformation were free to move on the uh, vertical direction, uh, which uh, uh, with a limit of uh, five percent of camber in upward and downward direction. Okay, so the optimization uh, for me, the optimization converged within fifty-three design iterations, and these are the results uh, obtained during optimizations. We see a tremendous improvement in coefficient of lift and a very minute change, a minute increase in uh, drag, and the resulting increase in uh, CL by CD was very high. Uh, it was around sixty-seven point three percent, and similarly, uh, leading edge moment uh, was higher for the optimized wing. Now, based on this. Uh, Based on these results, uh, we also conducted uh, the analysis for all the operating range of uh, delta wing, uh, operate, uh, starting from zero to twenty degrees. And uh, so, okay. So before that, we just look at the optimized geometry that was obtained. Uh, on my left, uh, there is the upper surface of the uh, optimized wing, uh, representing the color represents the vertical position of the. Uh, optimized wing. The red represents that the wing is protruded on the upper surface, meaning the uh, wing is camber, and the blue region on the lead, uh, blue and green region near the leading edge indicate that there is a certain droop uh, near the leading edge. So the cross section of this uh, uh, delta wing is shown in this figure here. Here we can see that the uh, the cross sections uh, slightly look like a circular camber. Uh, and on top of that, uh, what we see is uh, there is a major modification to the camber as a and a, and a very small changes to the uh, thickness near the leading edge and trailing edge of the geometry. And also we see that uh, with the introduction of camber, we uh, longitudinal camber, we also have a anhedral uh, occurring in the uh, optimized delta wing. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, results for the aerodynamic characteristics of the optimized wing uh, uh, when tested at a range of 0 to 20 degrees. Uh, throughout the range, we see a constant increase in coefficient of lift, uh, while in terms of uh, drag, we see a, a higher uh, minimum drag for the optimized wing, whereas uh, as the angle of attack increases, the total lift, uh, total drag decreases as compared to the baseline wing for the optimized wing. And similarly, uh, similarly, the coefficient of lift, uh, sorry, uh, leading edge moment coefficient uh, has a higher uh, nose down moment uh, at all angle of attack, while the uh, uh, moment slope remains the same. And also, the efficiency is higher throughout the range for the optimized wing and reaching maximum at the five, which is expected because uh, the design optimization was conducted at five degrees. Now to understand the uh, improved performance, uh, we then uh, look at the 
uh, flow characteristics. Here we have compared the baseline wing and the optimized wing. Uh, the baseline wing is on the starboard side, whereas the uh, optimized wing is on the port side. And uh, looking at the upper surface and looking at the vorticity distribution, we see a stronger vorticity on the upper surface uh, on the baseline wing, whereas a such strong vorticity is not observed on the upper surface uh, throughout the uh, throughout the range, and only a slight increase in vorticity is observed near the trailing edge. And uh, and on the lower surface, we see a slightly increased uh, leading is a uh, slightly increased vorticity on the lower surface, meaning that uh, for the optimized wing, major portion of the leading edge vortex is occurring on the lower surface ends, and then transitioning uh, or cross, crossing over to the upper surface near the uh, trailing edge. And uh, here we see the effect of uh, uh, okay, this uh, effect on the strength of vorticity uh, with optimization. This is the baseline wing. And for the optimized wing, we see that the vorticity has uh, uh, reduced uh, both on the uh, on the upper surface, while a slightly increase in vorticity is observed on the lower surface. Now, the effect of this uh, position of uh, leading edge vortices on the uh, uh, on uh, at higher angle of attack is also compared, and at 10 degrees angle of attack, we see that the even for the optimized wing, the leading edge vortex is uh, sitting on the upper surface, meaning that at higher angle of attack, now my delta, uh, optimized wing uh, starts to behave more like a conventional delta wing. Hence, it will retain the high, st uh, high stall characteristics. That is, uh, that is a salient feature of the delta wing. And uh, here we see the pressure, pressure distribution on the optimized wing and the baseline wing. Uh, for the baseline wing, we see that the uh, lift is a uh, okay. Suction pressure is distributed uh, evenly on the upper surface, and whereas the suction pressure is more concentrated on the baseline wing, and having the uh, having the vortex on the lower surface negatively impact impacted the uh, lift contribution from LEV, uh, as we can see here in the tip region. Okay, uh, I think I should hurry up now. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, it's interesting to observe that even for delta wing, uh, we were getting a better optimize, uh, better, oh, sorry, uh, better, uh, better efficiency with having a lift profile very close to the elliptical lift distribution. Okay, and in order to understand the effect of uh, uh, camber on the delta wing, we studied the circular camber delta wing for uh three camber wings uh 2.5 percent five percent and 7.5 percent and here we see the effect of uh, cl and alpha with increasing camber we see increase in cl uh, i'm really sorry about uh, the lag uh, it's creating some confusion oh no uh can you can we move to the next slide, please? If, if uh, you're having trouble, just let me know which slide you want to go to, and yeah, I'll, sure. I can get uh, you there. Yeah, can you go to the slide number twenty, please? Yeah, 19, 20. 20. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, here uh, we compare the uh, lift, uh, lift uh, aerodynamic characteristics of uh, the optimized wing and the uh, camber wing. Here we see uh, the green line is for the 5% camber wing and the blue line is for the optimized wing. We see that the aerodynamic characteristics of the optimized wing and the 5% camber wing is uh, uh, aligned with each other. And okay. So I think, uh, okay, so uh, here, this is the uh, effect of vorticity on the uh, effect of a camber on the vorticity. And with increasing the camber, we see that the uh, vorticity is starting to move on the lower surface. Uh, yeah, so uh, for a very high camber, uh, the vortex is very strong on the, uh, on the lower surface. This has the uh, effect uh, on the pressure distribution as we will be, uh, we'll be seeing on the next slide. Here we see this is the pressure distribution for 
2.5% camber, 5% camber, and 7.5% camber. For the, uh, here we see that the contribution from camber uh, in terms of uh, producing a negative uh, pressure coefficient is increasing with increasing camber. Whereas uh, the effect of uh, uh, suction uh, on the upper surface due to LEV is reduced with increasing camber. So the end result is, uh, Uh, next slide. Uh, so okay. So the end result is uh, with increasing camber, we have a, a LEV sitting on the uh, lower surface, which negatively impacts the uh, total lift contribution from the LEV, uh, and also increasing camber increases the total lift contribution from uh, curvature uh, suction created due to the curvature. And and in conclusion, I would like to say the whole optimization process is trying to capture this essence of. Uh, Finding the optimal camber where it uh, it has a compromise between the uh, reduced uh, leading edge vorticity and also a uh, uh, increased uh, lift due to the camber contribution. So, next slide, please. Okay, so these are my conclusions. You can uh, we can uh, just uh, uh, click forward in my conclusions. Yes. These are the same things I've repeated, so I think we can move uh, forward. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so finally, uh, although, okay. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> Okay, so finally, uh, although uh, a significant improvement in lift was observed with uh, having a very simple camber geometry, additional uh, lift imp uh, efficiency improvement were observed by aerodynamic step optimization, which encourages us to use the aerodynamic step advancement tool when the uh, efficiency is very critical. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the National Computing Facility at IIT Kharagpur. And Thank you all. Thank you all for your time. And also, I would like to thank SU2 Foundation for letting me present my work and SU2 committee for answering my queries whenever it was required. And special shout out to Jayanta Mukhattu Pade and Pedro for answering the queries on the forum as well as on the SU2 uh, uh, Slack channels. And finally, I would like to thank my professor Sandeep Sa uh, for guiding me to the project and my family for supporting me throughout the project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk.